good morning and today we're going to have our sermon now on revelation of being blessed to be a blessing this is one of my favorite sayings when my children used to leave for school in the morning or for work i'd say remember you're blessed to be a blessing and we're going to be looking at the book of deuteronomy as we go along in this four-part series on blessed to be a blessing first of all today I want to focus on this first message on the statement, the land is yours, which is written about in Deuteronomy. The land is yours. When we look at the book of Deuteronomy, it's a book of reminding them of who they were. And I'll talk about who they are in a moment. It's a book of preparation. You know, this book, Deuteronomy, is the fifth book in the Pentateuch, the writing of Moses. And it's quoted more than 80 times in the New Testament. In fact, it's most famous for the time when Jesus was in the wilderness being tested by the enemy there. And three times Jesus quoted words that are in Deuteronomy. It is written, it is written, it is written. So the land is yours. I'll never forget when I one day when I was in the heart of Papua New Guinea at a place called Milne Bay and it was night time well at the end of a week-long conference where we'd been speaking and we we're having a celebration feast when suddenly the education minister of the area drove in to the village with his car and he said you have to come you've got an urgent phone call so quickly I got into the car and we went up the hill to his residence and there I was able to ring my husband Phil and he had an urgent message for me and the urgent message was that that very night my father's kidneys had failed and all the family were being called in to say their final goodbyes because there wasn't any anticipation that my father would live to survive the night. That was sad news. As well as that, at the same time, my husband told me, and by the way, this coming Saturday, there's an auction of a deceased property just out on the South Gibson Highway from Cranbourne. What do you think? Straight away, my spirit quickened within me and I said, that land is ours. Because for many years since we'd come to Cranbourne, we'd been looking for land, we'd been putting submissions in everywhere only to be uh, passed out um, and said no that wasn't any good by the city of Casey council for whatever reason and we traveled from one place to the other nine different venues starting from the secondary college and then ending up back at the secondary college again but along that journey God had always said to us and particularly through the word of the prophets you are going to have land Another prophet came and said, you're going to put a whole lot of things into, like into a brown paper bag. I said, you're going to shake it then. Suddenly it's going to come and it's going to be yours. And I really felt when my husband told me about this auction that that was going to be ours. So after that phone call was finished, it was, it was very sad and there were lots of things to think about. I jumped in the car again and we went back down to where they were celebrating the finale of the conference and they asked me about the phone call I asked them please can we pray can we pray that my father survives this night can we pray and claim together that not only will he be alive when I come back from Papua New Guinea in two more weeks time but that I will have time with him before his time to pass away comes and I said also there's an auction this Saturday and I really believe that that land is going to be ours well, we prayed fervently and the next morning we left and travelled on an aeroplane to another part of Papua New Guinea, an island of Kaka, and it was Easter time. So nothing was open, no phones were available. So for two more weeks I was unable to even call home to see what had happened with my father and what had happened with the auction. But I knew that that land was ours. I knew by faith that my father was still alive and I would see him when I got back home again. The land is ours. And I'm going to tell you the end of that story as we come to the end of my message today and give you some feedback on what happened. But as we come to the book of Deuteronomy, 
the children of Israel on the verge of the promised land. Now they had been there before, 40 years nearly before. And see, God had rescued this group of people, the Israelites, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, because he wanted them to be a called out and chosen people. He had seen Abraham. Abraham had got his attention and God had made the promise to Abraham, leave where you live and travel to a land that I'm going to give you, you and your descendants. This land will be yours. Why? Why did God want to give them land? So that they could be a set apart people, blessed to be a blessing. That from them setting up the kingdom of heaven on earth, through this people ruled by God himself, that Christianity, faith in God, would become contagious and they would win the whole world back to God. So here they are, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, they're on the plains of Moab in the wilderness, right there on the edge of the promised land, in the 40th year of their journey from Egypt as slaves to the promised land. Now they had been here before. As I said, nearly 40 years before they'd been here before. They'd been at Mount Sinai and Moses had gone up and he'd given them the law, which was written down in the book of Exodus, Numbers and Leviticus. And here Moses is reminding them again in Deuteronomy, which Jude means second, the second law. He's reminding them. He's proclaiming to them, to the Israelites, all that the Lord had commanded them. He's restating the law which had been given to the generation before. And what he's saying, and this is my first point here in Deuteronomy 1 verse 6, he says to this people group, you have stayed long enough at this mountain. Break camp and advance. So Moses is saying, now it is time for us. We have been wandering around in this wilderness for long enough. We are not meant to stay in this wilderness, this place of no home, this place of moving from place to place like we were when we first came to Cranbourne to take on the church. There was no land, there was no building. We moved from place to place. And sometimes you can be tempted to stay right there because it becomes comfortable, becomes what you know and where you become familiar with. But God is saying to these Israelites, I didn't make you to live in this wilderness. Yes, I have looked after you. I have been there for you. But I did not make you to be a people who would live in a wilderness. I have promised through Abraham, Isaac and Jacob that you will go into the promised land. Why hadn't they gone in approximately 40 years before? As we can read about in Numbers chapter 13 and 14. They'd been in the same place, which was only still 11 days journey from going right into the promised land. They'd sent the spies out. But because of unbelief, because of lack of faith, because of doubt, because of complaining, they had not entered in. And now they'd wandered around in the wilderness for nearly another 40 years and they're back at the same place. And Moses is saying, now, 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 it is time for us to break camp. You know, for some of us, we have stopped long enough in that wilderness time. And it's time for us to break camp. It's time for us to pack up on that part of our journey and our season and to advance and to move on in faith. And that's what Moses is saying to this next generation. Of course, still faithful among them was Caleb and Joshua, two of the 12 tribes who had remained faithful, who had said, yes, it is possible. Men of a different character who had stayed the course, who had stayed true through all that time in the wilderness. I'm sure they were excited. But this next generation, were they, be able, were they going to be able to move on? Would they break out of their comfort zone? Or would it be easier for them to just stay in what they knew into the wilderness? So the first point is, you have stayed long enough at this mountain. Break camp, advance and move on in faith. Then Moses went on to remind them of all the things that had happened. And in Deuteronomy 1, 8, he says, See, I have given you this land. 
I promised this land to your forefathers long ago, to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and to their descendants. Now it's time for you to go in and to take possession. It's time for you to go in and take possession. Why? Because I want to form you as the people of God, because I want you to have a place to abode, to abide, to be known. A place where you can spread, spread forth, a place where you can be blessed, to be a blessing. And that's what God wants for each one of us. He doesn't want us just to survive. He doesn't just want us to get by. No, some of us right now, some of you right now, you're in a wilderness time. And this is a message for you. You have camped and stayed there long enough. It's time to break camp to advance. It's time to go in and take possession. And so Moses is saying this to them. He's reminding them. And in Deuteronomy 2 verse 11 it says, 38 years passed from the time we left Kadesh Barnea until we crossed the Zedid Valley. By then that entire generation of fighting men had perished from the camp as the Lord had sworn to them. So we see that what God had promised with the ten spies and the people who had listened to them was that they had rebelled against God. And as a result of that, instead of 11 days into the promised land taking possession, they wandered around for 40 more years in the wilderness. But the Lord reminded them here in Deuteronomy that even though you were in a wilderness time, and this applies to us as well, the Lord still was watching over you. The Lord had not left you. You lacked nothing, even though you were in the wilderness. When we think about this wilderness, and even a wilderness in our, our lives, a time of wilderness, the wilderness was a difficult and long journey, more difficult than just being in a desert. It was more difficult because of unbelief and because of the death of the adult generation, their forefathers that had come out from Egypt with them. They had all died within that 40 years. That's a lot of deaths. That's a lot of dying. That's a lot of walking in the wilderness. That's a lot of unbelief. And now Moses is giving this second law in Deuteronomy to a new generation, a new generation on the threshold of going in to claim the promises. Finally, would they be able to do it? Would they have the faith? Would they be able to believe? Would they be able to see God as bigger than the giants and obstacles that they would face, even just moving on, taking position and accepting change? You know, they were back where they were a generation before. Why were they back there after wandering? Because remember of the unbelief, the doubt, the lack of trust and not being able to take a risk. You know, to move into that next season of our life, we need to be able to take risks. It will cost. It will take a sacrifice. It will take pressing through in warfare, in prayer, in breakthrough to possess and take possession. But, you know, you can't be a blessing without being blessed. You can't be a blessing without being blessed. And by faith, with trust, take risks. Step into the blessing. We need to step into it, which means packing up camp of where we are in the wilderness and going in, believing that what God has said is prophetic words of our, our life. You know, some of you have had prophetic words over your life and yet you haven't seen it become a reality yet. Maybe sometimes because of unbelief or lack of faith or trust in God and other times simply because God has his timing. And in between the promise being given and the promise being received, there is often a time of testing where God is testing what is in our heart? There is a time of testing through the hardships and the trials. And so by faith, we need to take 
those steps. We need to take risks. It, it is a risk. Moving from what is known to the unknown. Moving from our comfort zone and out of that. Even accepting and embracing change is a risk. Will they be able to do it? Will they be able to survive? Will God really be in the next season? They're questions that we ask ourselves. But I want to remind you that God went on through Moses to remind them that the enemy has already been delivered into their hands. They haven't seen it yet. It hasn't become a literal reality yet. But by faith, God is saying that already I have delivered your enemies into your hands. God fights your battles. He fights the battles for you. And he fights your battle. There's a difference there. He fights your battle and he fights for you. So Moses is saying to these people in Deuteronomy, do not be afraid. Encourage and strengthen yourself. And in Colossians 2 verse 15, one of my favorite scriptures that I want to remind us today, we need to remember this as we step into what God has for us that next season Colossians 2 15 and Jesus said here through the words of Paul to the church at Corinth uh, Colosh and having disarmed the powers and authorities he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them by the cross Jesus has already won legally every blessing for us in Ephesians 1 6 it says we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places yes it's already a done deal Jesus has already overcome our enemies the promised land is waiting for us Romans 8 37 then goes on to talk about us it says no in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us the chapter Early on, the verses are talking about who can separate us from the love of God. Can trouble, tribulation, death, height, width, even the deepest ocean and the highest heavens cannot separate us from the love of God. No, in all these things, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Nothing will overcome the work that God has done done and is doing in our lives and the blessings he wants to bring us into so Moses said you have stayed here long enough pack up break camp and advance move on in faith then he said to them see I have given you this land go in and take possession and now my third point today that I want to remind you is he goes on to say in Deuteronomy now, chapter 2, verse 3, he says, Now begin to conquer and possess the land. God has given us his promise. He's given us his word. And now it's up to us to move, to literally go on into that next stage of conquering and possessing the land, which takes risk. It takes stepping out. It takes going in. It means moving on. It means advancing and taking possession. And as we do that, there are some things we have to leave behind. We have to leave behind the thoughts of Egypt and the leeks and the garlics there and the way that life was. We have to leave behind the security of the wilderness where God provided everything for them and they didn't have to do anything. They didn't have to fight they didn't have to wrestle. God had done it for them. They had to step on in. They had to conquer. They had to take possession. What God is challenging and encouraging us through this message today from Deuteronomy chapter 1 to chapter 3, as Moses is reminding this next generation, as I am reminding you as a next generation of Christians, don't stay where you are. God has given you the land. Now begin to conquer and possess the land. And I want to go back to the story that I shared with you at the start of this sermon 
where I was in the depths of Papua New Guinea and I got that phone call on that night suddenly to say that my father's kidneys were failing and they didn't think that he would survive the night. That also, my husband told me there was a piece of land, 21 and a half acres on South Gibson Highway that was going up for auction as a deceased property. And straight away I knew by faith that God was going to intervene in both of these situations, that that land was ours. Why? So that we could have a big name? So that we could be proud? No. God doesn't bless us so that we can just contain it, so that we can have big heads and be proud. God wants to bless us so we can be a blessing, so that as we lift up the name of Jesus and we lift him high, all men will be drawn unto him. God wanted to ha us to have a permanent place where we could put down our roots, where we could build a church, where we could fulfill the vision that he'd given to us for an early learning centre, kindergarten, childcare and a school and all the other things that he placed into our hearts of church planting and missions. We needed to have a base for that. But as I said, it was Nearly two weeks later, before I even found out any news, because I was locked on the island, not locked, I went over on a boat, but it was Easter, there were no phones available for me to call back home. So finally I got to ring my husband to find out. I knew already that the battle was won. I knew already that the land was ours. But what was the answer? As I ring my husband up with great excitement once I landed in Port Moresby, I found out that what God had promised me had become a reality, that my father's kidneys were working again 70% and he lived another five months after I got home before he passed away in the August of that year. And that was a beautiful time where God did many things. So God answered that prayer. I took possession of that promise that he had given me by wrestling in prayer and believing and trusting in God that he could do what I couldn't do. But what about the land? Remember that was straight away dropped into my spirit. Yes, that land is yours. And when I talked to my husband on the phone, to my delight and of course, a confirmation of what God had said to me, we had been able to secure that 21 and a half acres at that deceased property auction that Saturday. And when I came back home again, we were able to have a dedication service because God had given us a great dream for that 21 and a half acres of land. And I can remember the first time we went there to drive that peg into the ground. It was pouring with rain. This property was covered with with uh, blackberries and it had been um, ill-kept for many years because of the elderly gentleman that had tried to run this farm. There was nothing on it, but God had given us a great vision. We put our stake down and now today this land is fully developed. In fact, it's covered with buildings and we've achieved every dream that God has given to us. And what about the Israelites? Yes, this time, this generation, they packed up camp. They believed that God said that the land was theirs. They went in, they conquered and they took possession and they set up the land and they became the nation of Israel, the people of God, blessed to be a blessing. I want to bring that down to us individually now. God has many great and precious promises for you. We already know that because the Bible is filled with them. God has given you land. He has promised you great blessings. But sometimes we stay in the wilderness and we camp there because of our lack of faith or belief or because we don't press on. We don't go in and take possession of those great promises that he's given us. Some of us have had prophetic words over our life and they haven't become a reality yet. Maybe we've just resigned to staying in that wilderness. But I want you today to stir your hearts up. God wants you to take possession. He wants you to roll up that place where you've camped, roll up that mat, roll up that tent. He wants you to move on 
to take those promises, to claim those promises. What does that mean to you? Some of you, it means putting away unbelief and stirring up faith once again. For some of you, it means getting back to reading those promises and those prophetic words and beginning to prophetically pray them over your life again. It means doing warfare with the enemy who wants to try and keep us in a small and locked down place, just like we are in this fourth lockdown here in Melbourne. But you know, God is not locked down. And God will not keep us as a locked down people wandering in the wilderness. That's not what his plan for you is. There are so many precious and powerful promises that we have to pray and do some warfare with the enemy, remind ourselves, remind the enemy, remind God that they are ours. Don't let the enemy rob, kill, steal and destroy your destiny from your life. Don't let him keep you in the wilderness. Break that off. Break those shackles of the past off. Whatever is holding you back, it's time to move on because the land is yours. I want to encourage you from the book of Deuteronomy today with these three points. You have stayed long enough at this place. Pack up, break camp and move on. I want to remind you today, see God says I have given you the land. Go in and take possession of those promises that I've given you way back. And the third point is now begin to conquer and possess the land. You are more than conquer, a conqueror through Christ who loved you and gave himself for you. If you're feeling like you lack victory, you lack strength, you're feeling disempowered, you're feeling discouraged, I want to pray for you today because God has a great promised land for you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, for the book of Deuteronomy, Lord, where here Moses is reminding this next generation, don't live in the past. Don't look back to the past. It's time for you to move on. The promises that I gave you generations before are still the same for today. The word that I have given you is just as powerful and true today, and I'm going to see it fulfilled. So Lord, encourage the hearts of the hearers today Help them, Lord God, to shake off the shackles of the past, shake off the grief and the death of the past, and to move on, Lord God, to claim those promises, to live in those promises. Why? So that they can be blessed to be a blessing, so that they can be a conduit of blessing, so they can show the powerful, mighty hand of God through answered prayer, understanding of the word of God, being victorious and confident, rising up in the blessings that God has given them so they can show the goodness and power of God so they can flow that out to others, Lord. Lord, if there's anyone that is still living in intimidation and fear, break that off their lives. Anxiety, grief, depression, break it off their lives, I pray in Jesus' name and bring them in to the next season of the blessings of God. We thank you for that, Lord. And Lord, if there's anyone here, they don't know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour, I pray right now that you will minister to them, Lord God, that, Lord, you will draw their hearts to you. And Lord, right now, even as I pray this prayer, that they will pray, pray this prayer of surrendering their life to you. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for every wrong thing that I've ever done. Today I need you. I invite you, Jesus, to come into my heart to forgive me for every wrong thing that I've ever done. From this day on, I want to live a new life with you in the centre of it. Lord, I want to live my life for you. I want to be blessed to be a blessing. I pray for this in Jesus' mighty and powerful name. Amen. You know, if this prayer and this message blessed you today, really encourage you to go onto our website at www.turningpointchurches.org and write a comment, put up a prayer request or press on to the button that says made a decision and we've got some great resources there to help you to continue to grow. But today, as I finish this message, I want you to remember that you are blessed to be a blessing. 
God bless you and God bless your week ahead.